I'd like to call the meeting to order the June 16th City Council meeting for the City of Belleville. Just a quick reminder uh, for those of you who may be new to our meeting a location, if there would be a reason to evacuate for a fire type of uh, disaster, we would ask that you calmly go out the doors, go out the front door, carefully cross the street, and congregate by the St. Clair County sign um, so that we could kind of check and make sure we check on each other, everybody got out of the building. If we had severe weather ever when you're in this meeting room here, we'd ask for you to go out the hallway, follow the signs, or talk to the police officers. Right across from the counter of the clerk's office is the stairs. Go downstairs to the area that's deemed to be a good place to be in the case of severe weather to get away from windows and get downstairs to the lower level. With that said, um, one more quick reminder. Uh, if anyone's speaking this evening, please step up to the microphone. We are taping the meetings now, and we are they are being posted the next day on the website. We are still having, we're going to have a meeting again tomorrow. I think uh, Rich Peppers is going to be working for me to continue to follow. There's some problem with the fiber optics hookup as well, I was told, to Lindenwood. So they're still struggling longer, much longer than they told us. But we are able to show these meetings now on the web the next morning. They're loaded uh, and put on the web. Uh, but so please speak into the microphone after you've been recognized and uh, uh, make sure that all of us use the microphone, alderman, et cetera. Okay, with that said, I'll go to roll call of aldermen. Mr. Heisler. Here. Mr. Kinsella. Here. Mrs. Holt. Here. Mrs. Schmidt. Here. Mr. Rudgewitz. Here. Mr. Randall. Here. Mr. Anthony. Here. Mr. Davidson. Dr. Silsby. Here. Mr. Hayden. Here. Mr. Seibert. Here. Mr. White. Here. Mr. Galletti. Mr. Musgrove. Here. Mr. Orlett. Here. Ms. Schneider. Here. Mr. Galletti was here earlier. Did he say anything? He didn't. I haven't seen anything. I saw him leave, but uh, I left for a few minutes too and came right back. So I, we'll see. I, I didn't. He didn't say anything that he wasn't coming back. Not I that I know. That. Uh, roll call of department heads. Police Chief Clay. Fire Chief Poor. City Attorney Garrett Horner. Here. Ken Vaughn. Here. Royce Carlisle. Here. Jamie Matrit. Here. Tim Gregowitz. Here. Jim Schneider. Here. Leander Spearman. Here. Emily Fultz. Here. Chuck Schaefer. Here. Bob Sabo. Here. Debbie Belleville. Here. Okay, let it be. Uh, Mr. Gletty's here. I thought he, I figured he'd be right back. Uh, the police chief and fire chief are excused. They unfortunately are currently at a two alarm fire at Main Street Market. So. Um, uh, I just came back from there, and it's uh, they're out there now, so they're excused. And Chuck Schaefer has Mike, Mike uh, here tonight uh, from from the street department. So, uh, with that said, uh, I would ask you to please stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible. The first order of business this evening is we have two public hearings. I'm going to officially open the first public hearing right now. And I officially open the public hearing regarding the City of Belleville's comprehensive plan. And my first action will be to ask Emily Foltz, Director of Economic Development, to step forward and uh, give us a few facts and then uh, introduce some of the other folks here who have a few comments. Sure. Emily? Thank you. Well, as you know, um, we are a year, almost a year into our comprehensive planning process. We actually started this in October of 2012, going out for qualifications, and hired Ken Dickeast Collaborative in June of 2013. Um, we held our first joint meeting with the Planning Commission and City Council in August of 2013. And since then, we've had four listening sessions, six public workshops, um, a forum with students, both college and high school aged, um, at Lindenwood University in honor of Martin Luther King Day, talking about community. Um, we have made presentations to the Board of Directors, the Chamber of Commerce. We've been on St. Louis on the Air on NPR. Um, and we've had a couple of joint meetings with the Planning Commission um, and City Council over the pro um, and the Comprehensive, Planning, Comprehensive Plan Advisory Committee over the course of the last year. So we're here tonight um, to ask 
basically for your approval of the plan. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Gary, and he's going to say just a couple of words um, on how this is going to go tonight. Gary? Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Um, I've taken you through the details of this document at other workshops, so I'll keep it at a, a bigger picture tonight. But uh, I just want to reiterate one point from earlier discussions, and that is by adopting this document, nothing happens automatically. You are still in charge in terms of city budget, approving contracts, approving changes to regulations, agreements with other entities. So all those things happen the same way. Hopefully this document gives you longer term perspective, some facts and figures about your city relative to other communities, and some things that members of your community and through our discussions have risen to the top as priorities and then action items on how to tackle those. Uh, we like to organize these in five areas of action, capital improvements, shovel in the dirt type projects, your programs and initiatives that you undertake as a city, things you do in partnership with other business, nonprofit, and other levels of government, um, partnerships, uh, which uh, just mentioned again, and then more targeted planning. Uh, your city has a history of doing corridor studies. There's a neighborhood planning focus now. So uh, different levels, things like parks have been studied in the past, so focusing on those pieces. At your level, the thing that I would point you to in this document is in the final section implementation. There are the large pages that say community priorities and priority actions. Those are the items that rose to the top. Uh, that can be a reference page going forward of really the heart of this plan. And finally, um, the procedure tonight, as Emily mentioned, um, in some cases, these are adopted as presented. If council does have items that you want to talk about further, uh, we often have plans adopted subject to specified changes. We can handle that tonight. I do want to itemize four things that we've come to uh, brought to our attention between ourselves and staff. In that priority actions table, part of that table is action items with who and when certain things might happen. And we caught a couple of places where we should add some other departments to the list. And let me itemize those. The first one is the residential street revitalization program. Engineering needs to be on that list. It's not right now, so we've, we're at, we'll add that to the final document. Uh, there's a targeted housing action item. Uh, we do want to add the housing department, of course, to that list. And there's a marketing initiative, marketing the community, the marketing department. So some obvious ones that just were left off the list in that work. And the final item of the four on the future land use map, uh, we caught a location uh, along Route 15 that's currently shown as a small area of commercial at the corner across from the shrine. Uh, we're enlarging that area. It was meant to be a larger area of the general commercial category on that map. So that's the one map change. It's really a correction on our part. Um, Mayor, if I don't get a chance to say it later, I'd like to say now, this is roughly my 35th, 36th type of these plans I've done with communities. Emily Fultz is one of the best client staff people I have ever worked with in terms of efficiency, getting stuff to us that we needed, working with us collaborative, collaboratively with all the things that she has to deal with every day. Uh, we do intend, as staff and consultant, to pursue an Illinois statewide award for this plan in the fall. So that's another item we'll be pursuing. So I'm here as a resource tonight as you get into your discussion. Okay, I'm going to, before you maybe sit down, open it up. Are there questions from anyone on the council or in the audience uh, of Gary or of Emily, first off? Can we recognize Emily and give her a round of applause? I think it'd be very done? good. <laughs> And I, I'd go a step further. The Planning Commission, there's a number of people here. Would all the Planning Commission members stand? I, I neglected to do that. I'm sorry. That was on my list of people to thank. We have Comprehensive Plan Advisory Committee members here and Planning Commission members. Jim Kurtz is the chairman of the Planning Commission. Chris Rothweiler is also on the Planning Commission. And Ashley Pollack is, was on our Comprehensive Plan Advisory Committee. And she was instrumental in the um, forum that we had at Lindenwood University. So I want to thank her for that. And Gloria Crowder as well, who's not here tonight. But she helped uh, put that on as well. And it was a wonderful event. So yeah. thank you, everyone. And I'd like, to, I'd like to go a step further. Uh, Emily's staff, Eric and Elle and Carrie, and then 
our staff, the, the department heads, everybody cooperated. I saw a team effort. Um, I, I watched with enthusiasm an awful lot of uh, public participation. I thought the new, uh, uh, by the web participation this year was excellent. It was, I shouldn't be surprised, but it was pretty significant and I think it was great because some people just can't stop what they're doing, but they can give you their thoughts and their concerns. Um, but I was very impressed the, the seriousness and the excitement that was brought to some of these meetings that I popped in at. Uh, there was a lot of people who were really interested and passionate about the next 10 to 20 years of Belleville. And I think that's, what, that's what's so exciting about the city is that uh, the, the public does get engaged and, and uh, I'm, I'm very, I'll agree again with Gary, I'm very pleased with Kendit Keast uh, and, and the people they had on their team uh, but I would also echo that Emily is. This has been a big, this has been a big task, and uh, she's done extremely well. So, are there any questions specifically, Alderman Schmidt? I don't have a question. I just wanted to echo the comments that I thought Emily did a wonderful job in leading us. But I think the council it was great that we selected Kendall Keys. They were so wonderful to work with, and they made tricky things easier to understand. And I had a look recently at Edwardsville's comprehensive plan. I think the one we're putting, we're voting on tonight is far superior and just looked so much more better. And they were winning an award for that. And I thought, well, ours is better. Well, we'll, we'll see what happens. But thanks for your enthusiasm. Is there anyone else that wants to add it? Yes, ma'am. I would hate to see this, after all the work that's been done, become something that just sits on the shelf. Oh, it won't. OK. I, I, <laughs> Well, I would like to propose maybe we could have a workshop where council and department heads could sit down and say, okay, let's let's prioritize some things. Is it, I know we get into Open Meetings Act and, and practicalities of maybe having people work on a Saturday, but I'd like us to try to work something out. We, we could talk. I mean, there's, let me just say this. I was, I think um, in 99 when we did the last major uh, update, a plan, I was a pretty young alderman of about two years. And I remember at that time, you know, uh, being at the sessions and people talked about how they would see Route 15 change, et cetera. Well, we've seen a lot of things change. A new high school out there, a Target store, a car dealerships, a post, you know, a lot of things throughout, Eckert's growth. And um, the one thing we talked about when Gary and I, one of the first times we sat down was that I don't think people realized how many things that were in that 99, 2000 plan that we accomplished, that we had tackled. And it's, I think, every one of the staff's intention and certainly this administration's intention that we are gonna continue to tackle and I think we will be in, uh, uh, bringing information forth to various committees on some of these various things that have been talked about soon about some initiatives that are, you know, that are gonna be getting off the plate, some new opportunities. But I'm not opposed to uh, sitting down and having some more brainstorming sessions, you are right. Sometimes we get ahead of ourselves, and, and unfortunately, uh, um, you know, sometimes it becomes a headline, becomes be just a, just a thought, and you got to be careful. Uh, but but I think uh, we certainly can we can certainly look at that. I'll just echo that and say that in Chapter Seven, um, we do list out that the Planning Commission will provide to the City Council an annual progress report of kind of where we're at and where we're going. So this is going to be the topic at many Planning Commission meetings. So that'll be the forum where we discuss kind of the progress of what's happening. Um, and staff in conjunction with the Planning Commission will provide that annual report to the City Council and um, so it'll, it'll be discussed more often than I think it was in the past. Any other comments or questions? Hearing none, I'm going to close this public hearing uh, regarding our, uh, the vote will occur in just a little while to accept and adopt the plan, uh, but if there's no other questions or concerns at this time, I will close the public hearing. With that pound of the gavel, I'm going to come back with another one and open a public hearing regarding the Belleville Police 2014 Justice Assistance Grant, commonly known as the JAG program. I'm going to ask Captain Don Sachs to come forward and give us just a little bit of an overview. This is a, a grant that we do annually. It seems, it seems like we've been for quite a while. And uh, I'll ask uh, Captain Sachs to kind of give us a review. Yes, the JAG grant has, I've been involved with it for about eight years. Every year, the government decides how much money different, various different cities, counties, and, and states throughout the, the United States get monies. 
they appropriate it, and they tell us about how much we should get. This year, our cut is uh, just shy of $19,000. There's various different things that we can spend it on, but we generally have always picked equipment. This year, we are going to start purchasing some new tasers. All the uniform officers, all the guys that are out on the street all the time, started carrying tasers a number of years ago. All of those original ones are starting to fail. They're way outdated. They no longer service them. It's time we need to buy some new ones. Tasers for the basic minimum, everything that you need to get it started is about $600 a piece. Then we always have to have extra batteries, extra cartridges, extra items and stuff. So we have to have a bunch of them. So it's gonna eat up that full 19,000 plus some out of our, our regular equipment general fund budget. But that's what we're looking to, to spend the monies on this year. Okay, any questions pertaining to this? Yes, sir. Yeah, Captain Sachs, um, what will you do with the old units? The old units we will send back to Taser. They have a program if we get into it quick enough that we can uh, return some and get a few dollars back on them. I, I assume that they're going to recycle some of the parts, but they will not service any of those old ones. Thanks. <clears throat> any other questions from the console or from the uh, uh, general public about anything pertaining to the JAG grant? It's pretty straightforward. We're obligated to hold this uh, public hearing, so we do it certainly to be in compliance, but usually not too many questions. Uh, uh, always the thing to comment each year what we're planning proposing to use the money for okay if there's no other comments or questions I will close the public hearing pertaining to the JAG grant the next thing I would like to say before we open public participation everyone by now should have been made themselves well versed in on the agendas the uh, the items on the agenda pertaining to uh, proper public participation using good character when you speak uh, Etc. We I don't need to read every rule, but it is there. We will stop you if you I guess uh, would lean too far to one way or the other. That might be out of bounds. But basically, keep your comments to about three minutes. Be polite, be respectful, and in a positive way, come uh, share what your concerns are uh, pertaining to the cities. Hopefully, to what's on the agenda or at least city business. We sometimes stray to county and world peace, and we're not quite ready to going to be able to do a whole lot about some of those state and county things right now here. So we would ask you kind of keep it locally uh, geared. So at this time, I will call for a show of your hands. I will recognize you and then ask you to come to the microphone, give your name and address, and speak for the, the items that you're concerned with. So I now open public participation. Is there anyone this evening who cares to speak? Yes, sir. My name is uh, <clears throat> Larry Drury, and I represent... Would you uh, give your address, Larry? Beg pardon? Would you give your address? Yes, I'm sorry. 627 Glenmore in um, Belleville, 62221. And I'm coming tonight to thank you very much for all your hard work you've done on changing uh, the definition of uh, cooling and warming shelters. And uh, I also represent... Uh, Angels of St. Clair County, and um, the mayor, and uh, Attorney Horner, and uh, some of his other staff have worked very hard with us in getting, I think, four of these cooling centers established. And I just want you to know that we really appreciate it. And uh, we're looking forward to doing more advocating for the homeless and getting uh, uh, the situation done right over the months and weeks and years ahead. So thank you very much, Mayor. Larry, thank you yes. very much. Is there anyone this evening, um, and I'll explain a little bit further when we get to that portion of the meeting, maybe about, in case there's any questions from the council about this process where we've been going through as we talked about in ordinance committee. Is there um, anyone else has anything for public participation? Yes, ma'am. I think I needed to be in a bit sooner. I wanted to speak on behalf of the comprehensive plan. You can still make a statement. You're in public participation. We'll allow it. Um, so I was on Would the Would you give your name? Oh, yeah. 
uh, Ashley Pollock. I'm at 302 West Cleveland Avenue in Belleville. Okay. Um, so I was on the advisory committee, um, both as a representative of Lindenwood University Belleville, and also as the chairwoman for the Belleville Historic Preservation Commission. And I just wanted to add to the record that in terms of the comprehensive plan, I think it does a really effective job of representing our history of Belleville um, while also honoring it. But then it also very much embraces the future, both economically, socially, and culturally. So I really hope that we see um, a, a positive vote tonight for the comprehensive plan. It's been a pleasure working with Emily and the staff. Thanks, Ashley. Yes, ma'am. Um, Janet Schmidt, Alderman. Um, I would like to say that a great friend of the city of Belleville, Miss Mary McHugh, is very ill right now. We'd ask for thoughts and prayers for her. Yeah, I, I would. I would second that. That all of you hold Mary in her thoughts. She's come across some very difficult health at the moment, and uh, um, uh, she certainly has been a very active lady all of her life. Fifty years in education, and never stopped then. But uh, yeah, she definitely can use our prayers and thoughts, and I. I think it's a very appropriate comment because she's been a township trustee for a number of years and uh, has been very participated in many, many committees and boards, Human Relations Commission, et cetera. So I thank you very much. Anyone else this evening for comment? Yes, ma'am. I'm short. <laughs> I'm Gloria Crowder from 18 Crestwood Court here in Belleville. And I, on behalf of the comprehensive plan, uh, I sat on the steering committee. Uh, if you guys would just have a positive vote, it embraces the future. Uh, like I told everyone, I am an implant. My husband spent over 20 something years in, in the military. Um, all my kids graduated from here. This plan is awesome. It, it, it really embraces the future. Um, because let's, let's face it, we've had some negative uh, feedback in the past, but this is truly one of the greatest plans that I have ever had the opportunity to be a part of. I'd do it again in a New York minute, or a Belleville minute. <laughs> but uh, anyway, uh, if you guys would just embrace it, vote positive, you have my ever uh, gratitude. <laughs> Thank Thanks, you. Gloria. Okay. Man, you got them all fired up there, Emily. Uh, anyone else? Hearing that, I'm going to close public participation. We're going to move on to a pretty full agenda. I, I uh, don't really have any other presentations or appointments tonight. Um, approval of the minutes, I'd ask for a motion to approve the minutes from the last city council meeting. Yes. Yes. Uh, motion no, by Alderman like Heisler. To approve the June 2nd, 2014 to approve and file the June 2nd, 2014 uh, City Council meeting. So move, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Heisler, second by Alderman Schmidt. Any changes? Yes, ma'am. Um, a correction. Yes. Um, Alderman Paul asked about the lady that was in here last week, Mayor Eckert, and Mr. Carter stated it has been taken care of. It hasn't been taken care of yet until maybe, I don't know if that can be changed, that it's not settled yet. I don't know, but I need to report that. Well, I think that situation you're talking about, it went to traffic committee. Alderman Harner re uh, rendered an uh, opinion on the legal question. Um, I mean. Well, it was removed from traffic and it's going to come back because they wanted to let the person get properly surveyed. But I think the first question was, was review it, and they spent quite a bit of time uh, in getting the legal advice. And I think the person now knows that, um, you know, that there was justification in accessing this. We can talk afterwards, but I... I well, it's, 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 Don't forget the microphone. Microphone. But it states that it's been taken care of, but it's still on the agenda. Yeah. I think maybe what... I the think other at the time of the last meeting, there had been conversations, and the thought was that it had been taken care of. Uh, the issue, however, does remain pending. Okay, well, uh, facets of it, so if you wanted know. to... So I, I, I mean, that's, that, that's the status I the, today. The, the change would be, instead of taking care of, would be that the, 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 the issue will be addressed, and we are addressing it and continue. So if we want to make... It's just been rescheduled. Well, it's, it's, being, it's in the process of being addressed. There's, there's probably more to it, but there, yes, Tim? So it's going back to traffic okay. again. Okay. Everybody agree with that slight change? Are you okay with that? Yeah, what, what was said was said. Okay. That's okay. Any other additions or corrections? 
All in favor of accepting and filing the minutes from the last council meeting signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. We have the claims, payroll, and disbursements. What's your pleasure? Yes, Your Honor. I'd like to make a motion to pay the claims, payrolls, and disbursements. So moved, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Heisler. Do I hear a second by Alderman uh, Schmidt? Do I hear any discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. <coughs> Silsby. Aye. Hayden, Aye. Seibert, Aye. White, Aye. Galetti, Aye. Musgrove, Aye. Orlett, Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. Um, we have a housing report of cash receipts, fiscal year 2014-15. What's your pleasure? Did oh. everybody jump up? Remove we. <laughs> Accept and file? Accept and file. Thank you. Sir. Motion by Alderman Second. Kinsella, second by Alderman Schmidt. Any discussion on the housing report? Mm -hmm. All in favor of accepting and filing signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Likewise, we have a treasurer's report of City of Belleville funds and statement of cash and investments for May 2014. What's your pleasure? I'd like to make a motion to receive and file the treasurer's report for May 2014. So motion by Alderman out. Heisler, second by Alderman Schmidt. Any discussion on a treasurer's report? All in favor of accepting and filing uh, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. Oral reports, Alderman Heisler. Yes, Your Honor. If there is no objection, I'd like to make the following two motions together and vote on them together. Proceed. Okay. Uh, the first motion to, on behalf of the Master Sewer Committee, I'd like to accept a quote from Illinois Electric Works to install variable frequency drives on pumps at the sewer treatment plant in the amount of $30,540. Second motion, uh, to uh, accept change order number 21 for the LTCP phase two from Hair Plumbing in the amount of $15,899.94. So moved, Your Honor. Motion second, by Your Alderman uh, Heisler, second by Alderman Hayden. Any discussion on these two motions? Yes, sir, Alderman Randall. Yeah, um, Mike, I'm sorry, Alderman Heisler. Um, did we want to note that uh, the net cost in terms of the pumps after the DCEO Illinois energy rebate of $21,620 would actually wind up being a net cost of $8,920 to the city. Yes. Uh, Royce, you and, uh, you and Jamie uh, agree with that. So I would, I would ask that that be noted. You accept that, gentlemen? Yes. Accepted by both the person who made the motion and the second, good point. Thanks. Um, yeah, we certainly realize that, but that's, that is a true thing with the energy savings. So we have a motion, we have two motions from, uh, um, coming from uh, Master Sewer Committee, as just read. If there's no further discussion, roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. White. Aye. Galetti. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Orlett. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Kinsella. I move we approve the development agreement with Cheller Tool and Die for the expansion of the existing facility located at 17 North Florida Avenue. Second. Motion by Alderman Kinsella, second by Alderman Schmidt. Discussion on this motion coming from uh, Economic Development, right? Right. Came out of their yes. committee. Any discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Hayden, Aye. Seibert, Aye. White, Aye. Galetti, Aye. Musgrove, Aye. Orlett, Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Kinsella? I move we approve the development agreement with Bank of Belleville for the construction of a new banking facility located at 213 South Illinois Street. Second. Motion by Alderman Kinsella, second by Alderman Schmidt. Discussion on this item? Yes, ma'am. Uh, yes. I want it for the record to state that I'm saying no for this because um, this is the kind of stuff that should have been addressed to us, Alderman, before, because the study wasn't even in when we first voted on this. And since then, we've had to buy a building in order to move our housing and engineering out for the Bank of Elbow to buy and that. And it's, we didn't even have the agreement until this evening when we got here. And that's where I think it's always said we just rubber stamp everything. And I have voted no on all this stuff because it should have been done. We should have been, been put up front the possibilities of everything. We're giving them back 
um, part of their real estate taxes. We're getting the um, asbestos, we're paying for that. This is all stuff that is their, it's their business, they should be taken care of. That is money that could be used in the city of Belleville and elsewhere. So I wanted for the record that I'm stating no because we should have had this agreement before we sat down at our chairs tonight. Okay. This is what I'm saying. We oh. get the stuff at the last minute. Alderman Schneider, you're entitled to your opinion. Your Honor. Yes. I would like to say that the Economic Development Committee had the agreement. They just changed some words on it. So members of this council did have it in advance. I came up to the city hall today and asked for it, and they could not give it to me. You didn't come to my office. I was at the front desk. Okay. Okay. Um, yes, ma'am, Alderman Holt. I did go to that committee meeting, and um, Eric had a different, this information in a different format that also included the percentage of the whole project the city was participating in. 11%. 11 percent. Okay. That was stated. Okay, thanks. Alderman Hayden. Yes, Your Honor, my, my question is under responsibility of the city of Bell item six. And the city shall provide 32 parking stalls for Bank of Bell near the new Bank of Belleville facility at a location to be approved by the Bank of Belleville. That, that's just very <laughs> vague. Where, where are we well, going to Well, I think we at? talked about this in executive session. Okay, I was and in that, I, that meeting. Well, I mean, I, we've had a couple, and that's the other thing I will say. We have talked about this in at least two executive sessions in the last two meetings about this as it progressed. Um, there's a, there is a parking concern. We are, the, the city attorney right now is um, in the process of working through some issues to uh, free up some parking in the immediate area, and, and uh, I think we're real close to having that resolved. And, and uh, you know, without, without totally getting in the midst of uh, negotiations, uh, I'd be glad to talk to you afterwards, but I think we had talked about a little bit in executive session where this might, how this might be worked out. Um, so I, I, you know, I'd be glad to, without going into too much detail here in open session, since there's some negotiating still going on, but I can tell you that uh, this was talked about the very first time we mentioned it, and I think it can be resolved really pretty easily. Um, <coughs> this is maybe one way I can make an example of it. If it's in open session that we're going to approve this, the public has a right to know how we're going to approve this, what it's going to cost and that, and where it's gonna be, um, because we're approving it, but we're not saying where. And if it's executive material, it should stay in executive. This should not come before a public meeting until it can be explained to where and what and why. You don't have to hold on I'd like to make a motion Honor. to amend. Uh, I, I'd like to mention that in the notes that I provide over there, um, it pretty well spells out everything in the agreement. I, I'm sorry if some of the aldermen don't pick up the notes that I make every meeting, oh, I picked it but up. I've done that as a matter of transparency, and we've included the basic gist of everything the city is going to be doing. Okay? And may I, so I the public say, does know. You, I had the floor. I was speaking when you interrupted, oh, but it doesn't say what it's going to cost the city, where it's going to be. The city of Belleville has a problem with parking as it is. This is a. This should be spelled out how much, where, and what it's going to cost the city. Then we're going to have to say yes. It says it right. We have talked about this in executive session. I, I would hope we can move this project forward tonight because of the, the timeliness, as we've explained, um, uh, working with the bank and for us to develop 720 West Main. There's a lot of. Uh, as I've said before, there's a lot of domino effect here of different things, and they've been very cooperative. This parking situation was talked about. Uh, it's not going to be impossible to solve. It's nothing that we haven't done with many other businesses to be cooperative. Um, we have a lot behind the, the building uh, that once the police department gets moved and once housing leaves that location is going to have many, many empty uh, spots, okay? But we're working out the logistics because of some old, because of some old, uh, maybe not properly documented situation between the city and the county. We're working it out, 
as to before we can grant something, we, we're, 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 we're in the process of, of, uh, of investigating exact ownership of that lot. That all transpired when the county built their garage in the early 80s, and there I guess there was some handshakes, but you know we're, we're finding that the lot is not in our name, so we're, we got every reason to believe it's gonna be worked out smoothly, and then we can certainly provide some spaces there that we won't need, because the plea, all the, the majority of the people who park in that lot right now behind housing are either housing employees, inspectors, or policemen. And, and with the new remodeling at City Hall, there's gonna be some additional parking up here between these two buildings for department heads, et cetera, where the detectives park now. So that lot will be virtually empty. So we're just, I'm trying to let Mr. Harner work it out. Uh, we're getting there. I have every reason to believe, as I explained before, that this is doable and not gonna be some gigantic cost to the city. Alderman Schneider. Yes, so you're saying item number six, we're voting on that, but we're not sure what we're voting on to be in writing. Yeah, I, I guess that's what I'm saying. We have one item that's still in the process of being declared, but as I'm explaining to you, uh, that item doesn't have uh, an outstanding price tag on it. It has a few things to be, a uh, few documents to be produced and a few things to be pr figured out. But it's, it, I don't believe that item should stop us from moving this, de this, this, this uh, development agreement forward in a timely manner to help build a new bank and, and appreciate, we appreciate the cooperation from Kevin Pisco and Bank of Belvo for the whole process. It's been very, uh, very good collaborative effort. Does that answer your question, Alden Hayden? Yeah, I, I just want to make it very clear. I, I totally support the uh, the uh, agreement. I just wanted to make sure we were not entering into an, an agreement that we could not, uh, you know, live up to it in relation to that. We if even have an option. You're a comfortable contingency. with that? We even have a contingency we're working on additional to that, but we believe that what I just laid out here, sketchy, is is going to be figured out very simply. And Garrett's real close to getting that worked out for us. Okay. Okay, anybody else have any other questions regarding this development agreement? We have a motion and we have a second, correct? Yes, we do. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. I believe the city is in this for too high a percentage, so I'm voting no. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Abstain. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. White. Galetti. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Orlett. Aye. Schneider. No. Ayes have it. Uh, we move now to... Uh, I move that we approve the amendment to, develop, to the development agreement for 4204 West Main Street Brewing Company at 4204 West Main Street. The only amendment is the extension of the project completion date to September 1st, 2014. Second. Motion by Alderman Kinsella, second uh, from Alderman Schmidt. I would ask that everybody, Eric, is it true that this is primarily is just to extend the uh, Enterprise Zone, correct? Correct. So everybody understands, it's just, it's extending the date on the Enterprise Zone. They're still doing uh, a little bit more work out there right now. They plan to do on the deck and some things, and uh, they've come to us. So this would just be an extension of the Enterprise Zone letter, because it ran, it's running out, it did or is any day. So, everybody understand where we're at with that? Roll call. Mister, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Mr. Randall, I just gotta say, Mr. Cons you gotta tell me, Counselor, if he abstains? Um, under the process rule, it's gonna be a determination of, of whether it goes with the vote. Okay, I'm um, just saying though, but I guess the one thing is this particular, you, you abstain on the last thing with the bank. This is, this is I'm sorry, this is 4204. Go ahead, proceed. Yeah, I would just like to state for the record, okay, that this particular motion here, um, this amendment request was not part of the last economic development agenda. So it came in too late. And and we've done that before, trying to be cooperative with business. Uh, they just came into us in fact, I think the day or two later, and he noticed that the letter and we you know, we didn't disagree with him, but he had more things he was trying to accomplish said it would make a significant help to him, and uh, we said we would take it to council. And we have done that. That has been done before in other instances trying to be business friendly. Okay? 
Um, any other questions about this particular motion? Eric? Just to clarify for, for all the right, if, if there had been a, a request for an additional incentive or something like that, we would have taken it back. To right. We'd have considered holding a special meeting if that had been necessary. Yeah. This is kind of a straightforward uh, situation. Any any other questions? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. White. Galetti, Aye. Musgrove, Aye. Orlett, Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. Alderman White. Yes, Your Honor. On behalf of the uh, Planning Commission, I'd like to make a motion to approve the comprehensive plan and have the appropriate ordinance drawn. And I guess, Second. Alderman White, do I have it that you, that's to include the changes that were brought forward tonight by staff and by Kendon Keist? Yes, Your Honor. I have discussed this evening. Okay. We have Second. a motion by Alderman Second. White. We have a second by Alderman Schmidt. Any discussions further than what were raised before? Hearing none, roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. White. Aye. Galetti. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Orla. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. Unanimous. Excellent. We move forward. At this time, we go to... Uh, Alderman Kinsella again, uh, on, on behalf, behalf of, of Ordinance and Legal Review Committee, I move we am amend Chapter 21 of the Liquor Code. Motion by Alderman Kinsella. Do I hear a second? Second. Second by Alderman Schmidt. Uh, this this is dealing with just real quick for everybody else who wasn't at Ordinance. It's dealing with uh, taking the manager position in a Class A liquor license and allowing them to live within five miles of the city limits. We had a few situations recently where we had people living one house outside and they were considered to be manager owners and, and really and truthfully the purpose of this is to get someone to the establishment in a quick response if the police are fire or someone need them to make contact and we understood that one or two houses are within so we, we put this radius of five mile to be reasonable. So that's what the amendment is, okay, ladies and gentlemen? So what, you know, and which, it's just class A? Well, the only one that has this specific requirement, Garrett, is Class A. Right. It's the poor license. Okay. 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 So restaurants and, and the rest of them don't have that. No, restaurant. the rest of them don't. The rest of them already don't have that responsibility. Okay. This would just give a little bit of jurisdictional uh, stretch to where they can live by five miles. Okay. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Is that correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Any further discussion? Yes, sir. Yes, with respect to. Um, Section 1, Section 21-1-4, and I'm going to reference line N. Any law enforcing public official, mayor, or member of the city council, and no such official shall be interested in any way, either directly or indirectly, in the manufacture, sale, or distribution of alcoholic liquor. Could you define for me official in that sentence? Does that include officers of the city? I think it does. It's not, it's, it's not part of this amendment tonight. I'm just raising the question. Okay, yeah, I mean, we'd have to investigate that. I mean, I, I believe that officers of the city, meaning officers such that we cannot hold a liquor license. How do you define well, I think that's what he's going to have to go back and do a little research on because that's not a part of this ordinance tonight. Officers defined in the municipal code, uh, but I'll have to check and see if it's otherwise defined by the city council in the ordinances. But I, I can certainly review that and give you an answer. But that's a no part of part of this amendment change, okay? But, but Your Honor, uh, Alderman Randall raises a concern about, a very good concern about this ordinance in general because uh, it's not necessarily even talking about a liquor license. It states that no public official, mayor, member, city council uh, can be involved in manufacture, sale, or distribution of alcohol, liquor. I mean, that's, I think that needs to be looked by the city attorney. 
Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're, we'll investigate that, but that's not the intent tonight. Is to uh, right. I understand. Is to deal with the jurisdiction of location of the manager living I, I residency. Totally residency that. is the issue. But we we may have found another possible glitch. Is all I'm. Oh, and I will tell you, there's many glitches, and that's why the RFQ went out to recodify our ordinances. I will tell you, there's many that need to be like that need to be reviewed and and adjusted and changed because. We don't disagree that the ordinance book has is, is definitely got many issues. Okay, so we have a motion and we have a second to amend this uh, amend this chapter uh, uh, ordinance number 7784 under chapter 21. Hearing no further questions, roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. White. Aye. Galetti. Musgrove. Aye. Orlet. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. We go to uh, number two, Alderman Kinsella. I move we approve the adoption of the prevailing wage rate. Motion by Alderman Kinsella. Do I hear second. a second? Second by Alderman Schmidt. Discussion. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. White. Aye. Galetti. Musgrove, Aye. Orlet, Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. One more. I move we approve amending Chapter 7, the business license to include warming and cooling centers. Second. Second. Motion by Alderman Kinsella. Second by, who is that? Hayden. Hayden. Alderman Hayden. Um, I'll open it for discussion, but if you, if I can, I gave a little explanation. I know, and you were going to get us some paperwork. And, and I, got I left to the, I okay. left to go to the fire. I understand. Um, Anyway, um, what, we've, what we've talked about is, and I think Mr. Drury gave a good lead up to where we're at here. We've been meeting for many months uh, out of concern from area churches and other groups, uh, constantly looking at ways that we can uh, deal with homeless concerns. One of the things we agreed upon that we've been doing somewhat in the past by opening up the library or pointing out that the library has hours for cooling or heating if people uh, need a place to go during the daytime hours. And we've had other places. Uh, Salvation Armies had been posted. Uh, but what we turned to was we had numerous churches that have come forward and, and you know, bless our churches in Belleville. They're hit through the history. They've been very strong in helping us uh, many times. Here's another example. There's a number of churches that have come, stepped up, uh, and we've, we've uh, what we're going to see, and I will get this to you within the next 48 hours to each of you, the criteria that we're using for opening a heating or cooling shelter is what the United Way has adopted. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's uh, very straightforward. It's basically when the National Weather Service issues an extreme heat warning or an extreme cold windshield warning. Uh, at those times when that happens, as mayor, under the ordinance, uh, under the emergency uh, services uh, provision, the mayor has the ability to designate disaster action. We would then agree that we would open these heating or cooling shelters from 10 a.m. to 8 p.m., correct, Larry? That's right. And we have several churches on the west end, the central part of town, and the east end, who, and, and that list is still being adjusted and kind of, you know, so I don't have the absolute right here at this moment, but I can tell you um, uh, Garden Heights Baptist Church on Mascuta Ro Road has agreed to be one. Uh, the uh, uh, Redeemer's House of Worship on 7400 uh, Winchester, Westchester, they, they've agreed. Uh, uh, Reverend Curry's church has stepped up downtown across from the library. Uh, there are others that are still involved in, in being a part of this. What they have agreed to do is that if we designate there's a need, and, and probably uh, heat will be the first thing that hits us, we would open these shelters and they will staff them with volunteers cold water, air condition, and if they're there for extended periods of time, possibly a sack lunch. Uh, we're gonna take this a step at a time, but it's a way to, I think in good, uh, good faith, have a little bit more of a conservative, I mean a, a, a planned effort of helping with people. We feel that many of these traditionally have been seniors uh, who have sought the cooling or heating places to go. Sometimes seniors, uh, have cut back on their air conditioner use because they, they, they're being frugal with wanting to pay for their medicine and they cut off the air conditioning cost. 
And when the, when the house heats up so much, then it's hard to reverse that. So we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna start on this slow, and we're working with a group. Uh, there's been a, a number of people who've been very faithful to meet with uh, uh, Mr. Harner and I, the police chief, the fire chief, and other staff, Jim Schneider. Uh, Jim has been very key in working with me with the agencies and the non-for-profit groups. We'll keep you posted, but we felt we needed this change in the ordinance first to, uh, uh, so we didn't go against what we were initially saying. Yes, Your Honor, I, I just wanted to state that basically what we're doing is allowing lawfully what are good and decent people in the city of Belleville and, and the, the good and decent people that run these churches and very other charitable things we're gonna be doing anyway. Right. And and to, to to force these situations where these people are going to be helping these people, and then somebody could say that they're in, in, in conflict with law when they're actually trying to help right. people. Right. This puts it into makes a no format sense. that makes it that makes it acceptable and and within the boundaries of the city law. It's, it's not only the lawful thing to do; it's the human thing to do. I agree, and that's what we felt, and I think we're going in the right direction here. This is a a, a small but big step. Um, any other comments or questions about this motion that's on the floor? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. White. Aye. Galetti. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Orlett. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Silsby. Your Honor, on behalf of the uh, Finance Committee, I'd like to make the following motion. Motion to approve the quote from Barcom Security for $4,234 to add new security cameras. So moved. Second. Second. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Seibert. Any discussion on the cameras? Yes, ma'am. Um, I just think this is wrong to be spending this money. Um, your cameras aren't going to pick up if someone puts something in the U.S. mail. Um, all our jobs, your job, mine, we all will periodically get a threat or something. And this money should be used not for cameras, for protection. It should go to the, for the city. They just said it's $600 a taser. Well, that money there would buy quite a few more tasers. Um, when uh, City Clerk Dallas um, had the threat, we didn't run out and buy cameras. So every time you get a threat, we're going to run out and buy more cameras. I noticed um, upstairs, in order to get out the doors now, there's a button on there that you have to press. When was this installed? We weren't told of any of this to make that change on those doors. Um, I just think that this is money that we don't need to be spending on extra cameras. The doors are locked to get in up there anyway. You could get the threat at your home. I could get a threat at my home. Any of us aldermen, our city workers, could get a threat. This is $4,234 that would go to buy in some more tasers to protect the citizens whose money it is. So I'm okay. voting no. Okay. I will just tell you that this recommendation came from the chief of police. It was him that came, it was the chief that came to my office after that last incident and stated that he really would like to see this move forward. We had talked about it before, put it on hold, so you might have your discussion in the future with Chief Blake. Your Honor, I have no problem with the, uh, the uh, cameras. I understand the cost. Uh, we, we, uh, sadly, we, we live in, 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 in a world and era where these things have to be done. Uh, we, we have two police officers in the back of the, the building. Why? Because uh, uh, some years back, a, a uh, uh, person that I knew quite well when I worked at the city of Ferguson was uh, director of public works of Kirkwood was, was shot. And this is what we're dealing with in the real world. My, my question, Your Honor, is the, the, the low bid compared to the, the, to the other bid is, is, is less than $100. And one could argue that the other bids camera based on the cost of, of, of a few dollars more is actually a better camera with better pixels that would create actually a better picture to, to see. And, and I want to know if, if that was totally reviewed by the staff because if we're looking at the lowest 
most advantageous bid. Some could argue that the other bid is actually more advantageous. Rich, do you want to address that? Rich and Donnie Sachs uh, did some of the review for us, and they had a reasoning, so that's why we uh, did this. So I'll let our IT director That'd speak be great. to that. Um, the main reason why we tried to go with uh, Barcom is their recorder system is Barcom. Um, I didn't want to get in a point your fingers match with the other company as far as if these cameras went bad, you know, hey, this is your fault. No, this is your problem. Um, what he's saying is the recorders, the, the cameras, what we have in the police dispatch are Barcom. Right. But the, and it's compatible with our system we currently have throughout the building. And then also the, uh, there's a device that plugs into the DVR. That's kind of your license, you know, like, kind of like a Microsoft right, license. Right. Um, we wouldn't know if we would have to purchase a full, a whole new uh, license if we went with the other company. Whereas we don't have to do that with Barcom. Would, 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 okay, and, and that makes sense. Would, would, but would you, looking at the cameras, would, would you agree that the, that the ones being offered by CompuType are actually probably a better camera mm -hmm. as far as pixel and perception of what you would see if we ever needed them? Yes, uh, I would probably agree with that. Okay, but as just far as that noted in the record. <laughs> Okay, and I, I just want to note that I turn this over to both Don Sachs, Chief Clay, and to Rich Peppers for their professional input. And, and when, the, when the bid was within such a close amount, we turned to them and said, what's your recommendation? And that's, as he just explained, what came out. Alderman Casilla. Your Honor, I'd like to explain also or mention also that there's more than just the threat to you personally. This is actually a threat to our employees. And as employers, we are obligated to make our employees' work environment safe. And I think we would be remiss, even if it didn't come to the mayor, but if we had something like this happen to one of our employees, I think we need to spend this money, and it's a wise investment. Alderman Holt. Um, I think Alderman Kinsella makes an interesting point. However, I would like to point out if this was such a serious incident, one would have hoped we would have actually been notified instead of reading about it in the newspaper two months after it happened. Well, it was on the crime blotter, and I listened to the chief because they were trying to find this subject. We knew that we believed that there was some mental illness involved, and rather than uh, get it out there where maybe we tipped it, we wanted to contact him, and so it took him almost two weeks. I'll be honest with you, after that, finally, we were moving on to so many other things and nobody asked about it. It was in the blotter at one point. Nobody picked up on it. Uh, as many staff and the upstairs was evacuated and the fire department was here and the hazmat was here. Uh, nobody ever raised a question. We moved on to so many other topics because that- Because we were not notified and did not know it happened. I can't ask you a question well, about something I don't know about. You know, I, well, I, I'm just telling I you- I don't consider it a part of my job to read everything that happens in the police department. But this was, if you're telling me this raises to such a serious level that we have got to take action about it, it should have been communicated to the alderman at the time it happened. In addition, this happened before the budget was approved. So why wasn't it thrown in there? Why is it being the, brought but forward the, the, now? The budget had already been off, off and running. We, we were, the final draft was done. We hadn't had any time to, to investigate this, have these, the study done by these couple companies and proposals. And we didn't have this information Rich, what, until sometime in May? May 21st. May 21st, yeah. So, I mean, it, it would have, you know, at that point in time with the budget, we knew that, you know, and, and I wasn't sure how expensive it was going to be uh, until we but talked to But it didn't even rise to the level to come up in Police and Fire Committee. You know, That's I, true. Well, I, I'm sure you can always, we can always find something wrong that we did wrong. I, it's here tonight. You, you can vote however you believe. I mean, we can always... Uh, I, I will tell you, uh, if, uh, if, if we had adequate staff, I could communicate with all the aldermen almost daily with emails about all the stuff that happens. But I will tell you, the two staff people I have run ragged right now to, to do the best we can, and, and sometimes we're still chasing ourselves and not moving as quick as some would like. Um, we, you know, put it on the agenda that we hire some more staff for, for all the communications. That, that We can talk about that. Okay, we have a motion and we have a second to approve these cameras. Correct, Dallas? Yes, Lost sir. Track. Uh, roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. No. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. 
Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. White. Aye. Galetti. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Orlet. Aye. Schneider. No. Ayes have it. Uh, we move to the next item. Um, is this still Silsby? Go ahead. A motion to approve an add-on of a liquid dispensing system for a new snow ice unit for 4,809 from Monroe Truck Equipment. So moved. Second, second Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Hayden to approve that request coming from, uh, well, I guess actually a finance committee. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion on real, that real item? Quick, real quick, Your Honor. I, I just want to thank uh, the committee chairman of Streets and Grades, Mr. Uh, Seibert and the staff uh, for their diligence in, in, in working forward to, to adding this uh, for those in the public that are not aware by, by having this system it will give us uh, trucks and we, we need to work on fixing the one other truck and in, in this in the future but at least we know we're going to have one new truck that's operational that can provide uh, chemicals when we have uh, uh, temperatures of 20 degrees or less and that improves our way of uh, dealing with streets for the public and that's great Okay, we have a, we have a motion and a second. Any uh, other comments? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. White. Aye. Galetti. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Orlet. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, Alderman Silsby. Uh, motion to approve a low bid, uh, bidder of Jack Schmidt Ford for purchase of two new public works trucks for a total price of 49918 So moved. Second. Motion by Alderman uh, Hayden, second by Alderman Seibert. Discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. White. Aye. Galetti. Musgrove. Aye. Orlet. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. Alderman Silsby. Motion to approve giving the mayor authorization to sign a loan for up to three million one hundred and eighty-five thousand for the purchase of seven twenty West Main and the enjoy adjoining piece of land for the police station project from First National Bank of Dietrich for a term of up to two years at a rate of one point two percent. Second. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Schmidt. Any discussion on this? Coming also from finance. Okay, yes. It says up to, but that is the actual amount, right? Jamie? I got closer to the mic tonight. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, when we close on those two pieces of land, or the, the property and the piece of land, um, in theory, the closing cost will be a little bit less by the time you factor in like real estate tax credits oh, okay. from the seller. Okay. So we're going to take out the loan for the exact amount needed for those two purchases. I understand. Thank you. Okay. We have a motion and we have a second. Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Epstein. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber. Aye. White. Aye. Galetti. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Orlet. Aye. Schneider. No. Motion carries. Alderman Silsby. Motion to hire WM uh, Financial Sur Strategies as financial advisor and Gilmore and Bell PC as bond counsel in connection with the bond financing related to the police station city hall project. So moved. Second. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Schmidt. Any discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewood. Aye. Randall. Epstein. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Cyber, White, Aye. Galetti, Aye. Musgrove, Aye. Orlet, Aye. Schneider. No. Motion carries. Alderman Seibert. Yes, Your Honor. I have three motions from the streets and grades that were passed. I'd like to read them all and have more on one. Any problem with that, folks? No. Proceed. To approve the low bidder DMS contracting in the amount of $139,488 for the concrete patch. Pavement markings to approve low bidder traffic control in the amount of $43,905.90. To approve 2014 annual service agreement with SCI Engineering Inc. So moved, Your Honor. Second, Your Honor. Motion by Alderman Seibert, second by Alderman Hayden to approve those three motions coming from uh, streets and grades. Any discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. 
Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Rudgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. White. Aye. Gletty. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Orlett. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. We move on to solicitor's license request from Natalie Cartesi to solicit investments through Edward Jones. Move we grant this request. Motion by Alderman Kinsella, second by Alderman Schmidt. Any discussion? All in favor of this uh, motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Oppose? Aye. Motion aye. carries. Uh, we go on to note the abstention by uh, Alderman Randall. We go on now to communications and I'll turn it to the clerk. A resolution number 3193, a resolution engaging the services of WM Financial Strategies as financial advisor in Gilmore and Bell PC as hold bond hold counsel. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Communications. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped right over. Yeah. I'm ready to go. Uh, number 12, A. Communication from us now. I'm trying. <laughs> communication from Belleville Parks and Recreation requesting permission to hold the annual tour to Belleville on Friday, July 11, 2014, starting at 8.30 p.m. from Union United Methodist Church at 721 East Main Street. So moved. Second. Motion by will be second by Alderman Schmidt. Any discussion on this first communication request? All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. The uh, street banner permit request from Inedge Shriners to display their banner at the North Illinois Street entrance to the city for their circus May 30th and 31st, 2015, and to be held at the Belclair Fairgrounds. So moved, yeah. Second. By Alderman, uh, Hayden, second by Alderman Schmidt. Any discussion on that? All those in favor of this communication request signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> Motion carries. We go to petitions, none, resolutions. I'd ask for a motion to read by title only resolution 3193 and 3194. So moved. Motion by Alderman Silsby uh, to read by title only, second by Alderman Schmidt. Any discussion? All in favor of meeting, reading these two motions as these two resolutions as just stated by title only and as a group signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. A resolution number 3193, a resolution engaging the services of WM financial strategies as financial advisor in Gilmore and Bell PC as bond counsel in connection with the issuance of general obligation bonds. B, resolution number 3194, resolution authorizing a promissory note. Motion to approve resolution 3193 and 3194, so moved. Motion second. by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Schmidt to approve those two resolutions as just read. Any further discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Epstein. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Silsby, Hayden, Aye. Seibert, Aye. White, Aye. Galletti, Aye. Musgrove, Aye. Orlett, Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, I'd ask for a motion to read by title only. Ordinance 7783, 7784, 7785, and 7786. So moved. Second. Motion by Alderman Schmidt, second by Alderman Silsby. And as a group, is that okay? Yes. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed? <laughs> motion carries. A, ordinance number 7783, an ordinance adopting comprehensive plan update. B, ordinance number 7784, an ordinance amending chapter 21, liquor code of the revised code of ordinances of Belleville, Illinois, as amended by amending portions of sections thereof. C, ordinance number 7785, an ordinance adopting the prevailing wage rate. D, ordinance number 7786, an ordinance amending chapter 7, business license of the revised code of ordinances of Belleville, Illinois, as amended by amending portions of sections thereof. Motion by Alderman Silsby, second by Alderman Schmidt to approve those ordinances as just read. <coughs> Any further discussion? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Ridgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. White. Aye. Galletti. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Orlett. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. Any unfinished business? Yes, sir. Yes, Your Honor. I, I've uh, submitted uh, two memos to the uh, city clerk that I'd like to enter into the uh, record tonight uh, that also requests uh, that they be uh, added as support data to uh, the next city council agenda in July as it relates to uh, TIF 10 and the uh, East uh, Washington Street uh, sidewalks. And lastly, uh, I have this evening. Uh, gave a little bit update as it relates to our uh, meetings on uh, TV and live stream. When are they going to be on 
charter cable and, and, and actually. Rich is going to try to meet with them tomorrow. The, apparently, Rich, wasn't the, the hold up the most recent thing is the fiber optics? They've run into problems running the fiber optics uh, into Lindenwood, which they originally said was that was never going to be the problem. Now, all the other equipment's now compatible, I believe, and all the other glitches. But now there's a fiber optic, and getting these fiber optics, I guess getting them in the schedule to be, get them to, to, to charter. So uh, they keep telling us it's close, but they, that, you know, I think what the good news is, Rich has had some experience now uh, in some practice here, putting on the, you know, filming these. When we get ready for the, the uh, situation with the TV, we'll be in pretty good shape. And they have been viewed by some on the web, as we hear, but we're waiting to hear. Um, I, you know, I will tell you, there's no doubt about it. I'm, I'm very disappointed in the fact that um, I just feel like Charter, this hasn't been the priority that it started out to be, and, and I'm disappointed myself. I, I, I would concur uh, with that statement. When, it, and is my understanding is, uh, that Lindenwood is then supposed to also be working with Rich, with, with people that are in their program that are going to be? They're going to work with Sharon Strasbaugh, who's going to be the liaison for his program. It could be with doing a segment for the Parks Department. It could be something on fire safety in October for the fire department. It might be with the police department on various safety do, tips. But we're do, going to have that ability. Excellent. excellent. Do, do you see down the road, Your Honor, where, where possibly committee meetings, especially such important meetings such as finance, could also some way, it's, somehow, it's, it's not an here. impossibility, but I, as I said before, we got to walk before we run, and we talked about one of the things that was talked about openly with them is probably uh, considering zoning board meetings okay. as, as one of the, the, the first steps. But a meeting such as finance is not an impossibility. So, and are, are we ar ar archiving these for perpetually, yeah. or yeah. yes, answer is yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, anything else on our old business or miscellaneous? Motor fuel claims in the amount of 30694 Motor claims be paid, Your Honor. Second. Motion by Alderman Seibert, second by Alderman Hayden. Any discussion on the motor fuel claims? Roll call. Heisler. Aye. Kinsella. Aye. Holt. Aye. Schmidt. Aye. Rudgewitz. Aye. Randall. Aye. Anthony. Aye. Davidson. Aye. Silsby. Aye. Hayden. Aye. Seibert. Aye. White. Aye. Galletti. Aye. Musgrove. Aye. Orlett. Aye. Schneider. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, we had a couple things that were pending as um, far as the uh, executive session, but as the attorney and I just talked, uh, a couple of the pieces of information have not all fallen together, so we won't meet tonight. Uh, we have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Alderman Schmidt, second by Alderman uh, Hayden. All in favor of adjournment, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.